Don't Starve Together's newest update, A Little Drama, is out now, everyone. And just like its name suggests, it's pretty small and already causing a bit of drama here and there. Whatever the case may be, however, it's also not the only release to note, as another quality of life overhaul dropped right alongside it. The list of tweaks here easily numbers in the dozens and offers changes to loot tables, adds entirely new foods and items, tweaks existing mechanics, and plenty more. So hold down your butts as I think it's time to talk the real updates. An update that has changed the tall bird game forever at that. The process of hatching and raising these teensy tiny eyeballs will be the exact same, mind you, so anticipate spending about 10 days with the however many small birds you have hatched, and a whopping 18 days with the teen birds here. But now things get a lot more interesting, as while we used to raise these guys to adulthood only for them to turn on us immediately, they will now become an adult, create an entirely new nest after a few seconds, and then turn on us immediately. But yes indeed folks, tall bird duplication is a thing after today, so take advantage. And we're only just getting started here, especially when there's a new boss drop to discuss. The antline of the Oasis Desert will now drop a blueprint for the Turf Razor Helm that will cost 5 beef flow fur, 3 pig skin, and a desert stone itself as you can see. And this thing is gonna boast 400 uses total, some waterproofness, a stylish look, and the added ability to automatically dig up turf as we walk over it. Not only that though, if turf is placed within the hat's one and only slot, it will actually replant that very turf too. If it can, of course. It's neat, but it cannot be refueled, nor is there an on and off switch if you know what I mean, so be mindful there. But turf, you say? I think I know a guy who is not only gonna love that hat, but also everything that comes next. Turf blueprints, and more. Crafted at the ancient pseudoscience station for three papyrus each, these turf blueprint sets offer us six turf crafts in total, all pulled from or influenced by the ruins in general. Now, most are rather dirt cheap, costing but a couple rocks to create. However, one or two will also be sending you back some nightmare fuel as well, so be aware of that. Be aware of this too. You don't actually have to crap half of them. Not when this update has also made it to where all ruins turf can now be pitchforked up and planted wherever we please. It's good stuff. And yet we're still not done talking about the literal ground as the ancient stonework turf of the ancient archive has also been added as a added blueprint and craft accessed via a distilled knowledge ball. Now I got mine from the terra firma tamper distilled knowledge, which has gotten via flushing a toilet with yellow water, but you might be able to get it out of the other ones. I'm not quite sure yet. But even if all of that still isn't enough, the game will soon have a snazzy and golden pitchfork to offer us as well, with a casual 800 uses in total. So enjoy it all. But do not dismiss the rest of the changes, as there's still plenty to come. Like how we can now refuel lazy foragers with nightmare fuel at roughly 20% each time no matter what we're picking up. How tents and siesta lean-tos have gotten a major buff and that both now offer us 15 uses each up from their original six in a similar vein walter's exclusive camper's tent now works identically to normal tents when it comes to healing over time which is also quite significant and finally at least for this sleepy segment here all fur rolls will now raise our temperatures when in use and can even combat the winds of winter to give you an idea of how well they do at that it's not bad but let us take a detour and talk about the one side of this quality of life update that, for whatever reason, folk are calling bad themselves. The newly added, relaxed playstyle. This here is the new screen we will see before each and every new world, and this fresh preset specifically apparently reduces damage taken by 35% overall, will not kill players if they are starving, freezing, overheating, or when they're in darkness, will lessen hound waves and nightmare creatures, disables wildfires, and more. It's easy mode essentially, and that's fine. Just don't play the damn thing if you don't like it. But while we're here, we might as well continue on this line and talk about the plethora of added settings options, like being able to stop any sanity drains from dead players, and death timers in the event that all players are dead, eliminate certain damage sources, like starvation at will, lower damage taken overall, allow for the regrowth of basic resources like saplings and grass, and more. In short, we have more options to play our way. But getting 
Getting back to some other gameplay changes, as believe it or not, we're still not even close to being done, comes the mechanic of quote-unquote farming charcoal with campfires. For you see, now when any fire is fueled to 100% capacity, it will later drop a piece of charcoal once it's down to 0% fuel. Now obviously, such things are going to be better and more efficient with fire pits, and I think this is a much bigger deal than you might think. There is a ton of easy ways to abuse this for sure. Changes to our cartographer's desks are next however, as the structures are now able to turn unwanted or duplicate blueprints, adverts, sketches, and more into a piece of plain old papyrus on the fly as seen here. Even the new recipe cards can be converted as well, but those will come on another day. I just want to point out that we are literally making papyrus without having to make papyrus. But yes, I think it's time to wrap up our day with some honorable mentions. Like how lunar experiments can now turn normal wopser dens into moon glass mounds if you do so choose to do so. Personally, I find this a complete waste of good wopsters. But hey, is something. As is this next addition, loading protection. In short, a past update decreased the time it takes for worlds to load, but loading screens were still getting in the way and leaving us in vulnerable positions. But now, we have a period of time to help avoid conflict between shards, so take advantage. Clay also updated the interface when interacting with a friendly scarecrow to make life easier, and now merms are disgusted by the death of fish again, although I truly do believe they should turn hostile in these scenarios at the end of the day, but hey, it ain't my game. But folks, there you have it, the newest quality of life update for Don't Stop Together here, and it's many, many gameplay tweaks. And heck, we didn't even get to all the new foods and such, as there is enough there for yet another video if you can believe it, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching folks, well wish you to all, don't forget that this is the same update with all the little drama nonsense, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!